Hamster is dead, and everything is worse now. Let's try not to cry for this video. Hi guys, and welcome back to a new video. It's been a couple of weeks since I've last posted. This was originally meant to be a really fun video. I was in the process of making some tiny helicopter hats for my hamsters. Unfortunately, while I was preparing for that video, one of my hamsters passed away. Um, if you're not familiar with me or my channel, I had two hamsters. One of them is Bulo, which is the one who is in this cage. He's sleeping, you won't see him, especially not from that far away. But. Um, Bilo was my first hamster and then I rescued Coco who is unfortunately no longer with us um, so I was very upset obviously and I did choose to take some time off before filming this video I really wanted to make a tribute video for Coco also as a heads up obviously from the title of this video this video will be discussing pet death, so if that is something that you do not want to see right now, I would strongly advise to click out. I will put a timestamp somewhere um, to the tribute part, which will just be videos of Coco at the end. So if you just want to watch that, you can just click to that part. But essentially, I chose to have Coco cremated and get the ashes back which might seem a bit extreme to some people. I know hamsters are really small pets, but that meant a lot to me. So I decided to make a video about this because I chose to have the ashes with me. So I chose to have them brought back. You can choose to have a group cremation, I believe, which means they will just dispose of the ashes themselves. But I wanted them back. Basically, I wanted Coco with me. If I had a house and a garden, I probably would have buried him there, but I live in a flat. I will probably be moving again, and I just wanted to keep him with me. However, when I was looking at the choice of urns, I really wasn't too happy with the selection. I wanted something a little bit more custom for Coco, so I decided to make him a little custom urn, which is part of the topic of this video. I have waited as long as I could to make this video, but obviously I still wanted to post it, so today's the day. Um, it still feels very really weird coming into this room because he was in the cage that is right there, um, which I've emptied. I haven't cleaned it yet. I'm still not sure if I'm going to keep the cage or if I'm... I don't think I'm going to be getting an another hamster anytime soon. Um, Coco wasn't supposed to join my family. It was a very last minute, spontaneous decision to uh, take him from a family friend who no longer could care for Coco. So. Definitely a very happy surprise. Um, he was a very fun hamster, so Here we are <laughs> I have decided to make him a custom urn. So I have gotten the ashes back I will remind you if you are not interested in this type of chat. I completely understand I'm quite comfortable talking about it because I do work in the funeral industry But I completely understand if this is not for you You can just skip to the footage of Coco at the end if you'd like or just click out and watch another video it does make me quite happy that my most viewed video on YouTube, my biggest video ever, is a video of Coco. So that makes me quite happy. I feel like quite a few people got to see a little side of him. But back to the urn, I basically decided to make um, an urn that really represented Coco. And his favorite treat has always been, I don't know if it's a treat, it's more of a chew toy, but he absolutely was obsessed with whimsies. And I thought, how cool would it be if I could incorporate that into an urn? It would be very custom, very Coco. So I have gone to my local vet to have him cremated. I'm not sure which company they used. I'm not sure who has dealt with it. I basically dropped him off at my local vet and they... And yesterday I went back to pick up the remains. So I will be showing you this. I've actually not opened anything yet. This is very new to me. Um, but I think it could be interesting if that's something you ever want to consider just to know what to expect. I'm not sure how much I'm comfortable showing, but I did get this bag back, which actually is just really, really lovely. Um, I didn't expect them to go so sweet, especially for a hamster. 
But um, the vet I used is honestly, I mean, I've never had any issues with any vets, but my local vet is amazing. Um, they were very, very kind to me and very understanding. So this is the box it came in. So it's just a little, I don't know if you can see, but it's a little bird, probably a dove. And it, right, so it is a really nice message on the box. It just says, gone from our sight, but never our memories, gone from our touch, but never our hearts. When I spoke to the vet, they let me choose a scatter tube, which is like just those little like cardboard tubes, um, which I, I knew wasn't going to be, you know, permanent. I knew it was just temporary. Um, oh, this is so nice, right? So this is actually really nice. So this is just plantable wildflower seed paper butterfly. Right, it's just it's just some seeds. Oh, sorry about the reflection. It's just some seeds inside a little paper butterfly. Is this gonna focus? I'm sorry. This is my first time using this camera. Um, but yeah, basically, it's just a little memorial plant. I think that's really nice. Um, that's really sweet. I have nowhere to plant this because I live in an apartment. But I'm gonna keep this. And right, and so the rest of the box. So this is the scatter tube, and it came with a little envelope. Well, a little card inside an envelope, and it's just to certify that Coco, the beloved pet of... Oh, it's just a, a certification that Coco was individually cremated, that's what it's called. So it's just a certificate. Um, we get that a lot because of my line of work. I deal with ashes quite often, um, and I think some people genuinely have a hard time trusting that we're giving back the right ashes. Um, just because a lot of it happens behind the scenes. But there is a lot of paperwork involved, so it's always nice to get a certificate like that just to make sure that you are getting your pet back. Um, so anyway, so this is the scatter tube. Now, I had no idea how many ashes would be coming back from a hamster because, again, because of my work, I know exactly how many ashes we get roughly from a human body. So I was afraid it was gonna be a really small amount. Um, I'm not gonna open this to show you. I am gonna look at it myself because I genuinely have no idea how much is in there and that will decide how big the urn will need to be. So the way it opens is it's just a little box, but you can, oh no, it's stuck, they glued it. I don't know why I'm so confused about this. I literally do this at work, but right, okay. I see what's going on. If you want to keep it in the scatter box, just leave it like that, right? But me, I'm going to take them out. I'm going to put them somewhere else. So you will have to open it. And there is a little circle at the top that you can push through. Yeah, you can push through it. All right, so I would say it's a very small amount. And it's probably, like, I would say maybe... It sounds so bad, right? Um, but it's probably like a tablespoon's worth, like maybe one or two. It's, it's a very small amount. So it's basically to give me an idea of how big I would like the urn to be to fit that. So what I'll do is I'll just include some clips of how I decided to incorporate the whimsy into the design. I wanted to make a mold of it, basically and have it on top of the box. So this is the final product. And initially, I basically thought that there were gonna be so few ashes that I would be able to fit this inside and like seal it and that would be the urn. I'm not sure why I expected such a small amount of ashes, but it's definitely way more than I thought. So I think I'm just gonna try and look for a really nice box and then put this on top. But I am planning on painting this the colors of cocoa. This is just Sculpey. Um, it's been baked. And I'm just going to paint it with acrylic. So I'll include a quick little clip of how I got this. If this is ever something you'd like to do, it doesn't have to be whimsy. It can be literally anything. It's very straightforward, but I thought it was just a lot nicer than just a generic scatter tube. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I'm not judging you if that's how you want to keep your pet. I also totally understand if you do not want the ashes back. This is just such a personal decision. 
but I thought this could be a little tutorial or maybe an inspiration for someone who wants something a bit more custom because I really wasn't too happy with the selection out there and yeah I just wanted something that really represented my hamster so I'll just show you the clip. So to make the mold of the whimsies I uh, selected a whimsy that's obviously the first part you need and again it does not need to be a whimsy you can pretty much use any object for this but the edges were a bit jagged so I wanted a nicer finish so I did grab a little sharp knife just to trim off the little sides and make it the whole thing a bit more smooth I'm not using good words right now but um, you can see on the video what I'm doing so I just scraped off the edges just to make it smoother so that when I make the mold there aren't any imperfections So the next product I used was a silicone molding paste. You can easily get that from Hobbycraft if you're in the UK, most likely from Michaels if you're in the US. Um, if you can't find it in any stores, I'm fairly sure Amazon has it probably in every single country, but it is a great tool. It just consists of two different pastes that you have to mix together. So you just mix them and mix them until it's one color but you do need to act quite quickly. Once they are mixed, it sets very quickly. You have about five minutes to make the mold. So just make sure that the whimsy is ready to go. Whatever object you're using, I suggest starting from the middle, just to make sure that there aren't any air bubbles or air pockets. Um, I basically covered the whole whimsy, pressed as hard as I could, and then I, ended up flipping it over and pushing it some more into the paste just to make sure that it caught every single detail from the whimsy. So I just wanted to make sure that nothing was missing and I just let it rest for half an hour. It, it really doesn't take that long, but I just went ahead and did something else. So I waited half an hour and once it was set, I removed the whimsy from the mold and I also ended up trimming the mold flat so that there weren't any excesses on the sides. I'll show you in a second what I'm talking about. To make the actual whimsy, I decided to use some Sculpey um, that I softened with Vaseline. If you're ever struggling with Sculpey or any Fimo type of clay and it's too hard, um, adding a little bit of Vaseline helps soften it. I wanted to be I wanted it to be easy to manipulate just to make sure that it would actually easily go into the mold and take up all the details. So once it was rolled into a softer ball, I pushed it into the mold. As you can see, as I was saying earlier, I did trim all the excess sides just so that it was laying flat. And again, I would suggest pushing it from the center outwards just to make sure that you don't end up with any air pockets or any details missing. Once I was happy that the mold was correctly filled, I just cut off or trimmed off the excess so that it would lay flat on any surface, so just use any knife for that. Um, and I did push it in some more and just kept adjusting it because I thought that I would be able to fit the ashes inside the actual whimsy. I did carve out a hole in the middle. You do not need to do that, but it would make the baking time go a lot faster. So. It might not be such a bad idea anyway. So I just followed the baking instructions. I demolded it. Sculpey is quite hard enough that it didn't lose its shape once I removed it from the mold, which is quite nice. And I just put it in the oven for about 20 minutes just to make sure that it was rock solid once it was baked.
Once it was cooled down from the oven, I decided to trim some of the edges again, just to remove some of the imperfections. I'm just using a little drilling tool. It's actually something I ordered for like acrylic nails. Um, I just had that on hand. You can also just use um, just a basic nail file um, that would work as well. You actually don't really need to do that, but I decided to. And I tried looking for a box um, online and in stores, but I couldn't find what I wanted. So I ended up just making my own. So again, out of Sculpey, I just decided to make a tiny box that would basically fit the little crocodile on top. And it's absolutely nothing fancy at all, but I just wanted something homemade um, and customized and personal for Coco. So I am quite happy with the result. And of course, as you can tell, I ended up just painting it black and covering it with a layer of gloss. It really doesn't look, you know, extremely professional. Usually I'm a lot more perfectionist than that, but I tend to just go for black for everything and I really just wanted the whimsy on top. So surprisingly, I am really happy with the result, but it was just mostly to inspire you in case you wanted to do anything similar. But now, enough of that, let's just go to the memoriam part. Thank you. 